Phương Thảo would like to extend a warm welcome to all viewers and listeners. Please join us in following the domestic and international news on 22 Hours channel. Right now, let's go through the main noteworthy content that have been arrived in today's program. Dear valued audience, the number of casualties due to a landslide in Trenhung District, Yunnan Province, China, last Friday has risen to 46 people, including 19 children. Search and rescue personnel confirmed today that the bodies of the last three individuals buried under debris have been located. As of now, all 46 people from 14 households who were buried have tragically lost their lives. Among the victims, there are at least 19 children. The landslide incident also resulted in two individuals being injured. Yesterday, a mid-slide occurred in Kaobao village, Kwok Chu Town, Tran Hung District, Yunnan Province, burying 14 houses and damaging two other houses. The French news agency reported today that such landslides frequently happen in the mountainous regions of China, where residents often do not adhere to safety standards when constructing homes in these areas. The earthquake in Yunnan has also claimed the lives of 81 people and left 946 others injured. A strong earthquake measuring 5.7 magnitude struck Kuailuong District, Yunnan Province, last Saturday. However, the death toll has now reached 81, with 946 people injured. More than 700,000 people have been affected, and 30,000 houses have collapsed. Reporters from China and Hong Kong finally gained access to the disaster-stricken area on Monday and discovered that many houses had been severely damaged, nearly reduced to rubble. Some disaster relief commanders have raised questions about the post-structural quality of the collapsed buildings, indicating inadequate construction standards. However, some villagers point out that the main cause of the earthquake is excessive mining, leading to serious soil erosion that causes rocks to fall and results in numerous casualties. Chinese media reported that a 5.7 Richter scale earthquake struck Kuailuong district last Friday and a larger aftershock occurred on Monday, causing an increase in the death toll. Successful rescue operations have become much more challenging, and the expected number of casualties is anticipated to rise. Officials cite earthquake experts who state that this seismic event is a dual-impact earthquake, the most powerful in the region in the past decade. Such swarms of earthquakes are characterized by high frequency, distinct energy release fluctuations, slow decay rates, and prolonged durations. Forecasters predict that the Wailuong disaster area will experience aftershocks of magnitude 5 and above in the near future. Furthermore, Yinin Meteorological Bureau forecasts indicate the possibility of moderate to heavy rainfall today and tomorrow, necessitating continued efforts to prevent further catastrophes. By Monday, authorities had evacuated more than 2,000 people. The government has established resettlement areas to provide temporary housing for at least 26,000 individuals. However, due to road closures and ongoing landslides in mountainous areas, relief supplies could only be transported to the disaster-stricken region by Monday. The Air Force of the Thando military region has mobilized a transport plane to carry 13 tons of supplies and transfer four seriously injured victims out of the disaster-stricken area for treatment. The local authorities have also increased the compensation amount for each victim's family from 10,000 Chinese yuan to 20,000 Chinese yuan. A resident from the village informed reporters that many people were crushed to death by rocks, with blood and gore covering them. Some victims were only found with their lower halves intact, while their upper bodies were missing. The scene indicates that better building structures could have potentially saved lives. Tran Kwok Dung, the commander of the earthquake rescue team from a construction battalion stationed in Yenin, also pointed out that the magnitude 5. 7 Richter scale earthquake had caused such a severe catastrophe. He believes that the quality of most buildings in the area does not meet earthquake resistance standards. Another piece of evidence pointing to the project's failure is a newly constructed local school building that became operational just a week before the earthquake. It suffered serious tilting, cracked walls, and posed a danger to students. The school evacuated students and suspended classes indefinitely, yet they did not provide an explanation for the sudden tilting of the new building. A citizen from Lak Tu Har Town, Wailuong District, the epicenter of the earthquake, stated that the majority of casualties were caused by the relentless local mineral mining activities that led to hollowing out the mountains. 
widespread deforestation also contributed to severe soil erosion, causing a significant amount of falling rocks and resulting in fatalities during the earthquake. The town currently hosts four large mineral processing facilities, employing thousands of workers. Many earthquake victims were miners. According to local victims' accounts, some residents living on the mountain sites reported feeling the vibrations from the mining activities deep within the earth. Their houses often shook, making them vulnerable to collapsing during earthquakes. Investigations by the local government reveal the existence of 44 geological hazards in the town, posing dangers to over 2,000 people from more than 500 farming households. The Yinan earthquake has garnered attention, with some netizens questioning how 5.7 magnitude Richter scale earthquake could lead to the collapse of a school building, suggesting issues with the building's quality. Some outraged netizens accuse the authorities of disregarding human lives, asserting that throughout China, financial interests often lead to collusion between the government and business people. Calls for a thorough investigation and enhanced earthquake-resistant capabilities to prevent future disasters have been voiced. Buildings in the disaster-stricken area have all been reduced to rubble. They either collapsed or suffered severe damage. A 5.7 magnitude Richter scale earthquake can cause the collapse of many houses, revealing that these buildings fail to meet even the minimum earthquake resistance standards. The disaster relief commander also notes that the earthquake highlights the stark wealth disparity in the affected area. If this earthquake had occurred in a more developed economic area, the impact of such an intensity would not have resulted in such significant losses. After the earthquake, the victims are extremely fearful of makeshift buildings and prefer to sleep on the streets, bridges, and even desolate places. Although some areas in Wailuang district, the hardest hit area, have begun to gradually restore communication with the outside world as of yesterday, rescue operations continue to face difficulties due to traffic congestion. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent days, heavy rains have persisted in various parts of China. Heavier torrential rains have been observed in several regions including central and northern Guangxi, Hubei, northern Guangdong, southeastern Hubei, and southern Nanwei. The prolonged heavy rainfall has caused many hydrological stations in the Yangtze River and the Yangtze River Basin to exceed their warning levels, resulting in severe flooding in Hubei, Guangxi, Kuaichao, and other areas. Yesterday, the second flood of the year on the Yangtze River formed. Within a week, 160 rivers have experienced flooding above warning levels. Following the spread of images showing BAC Tuchao being flooded on Trongsar, some netizens joked that the continued heavy rain had caused the world's largest aircraft carrier, BAC Tuchao, to be launched in Trongsar. Excessive rainfall in many areas of China has surpassed seasonal warning thresholds, posing a risk of flooding. The second flood on the Yangtze River has formed, affecting over 4 million residents in Hubei. In response to the general news about China's defense, a three-tier emergency response has been initiated to control the flooding. According to meteorological hydrological forecasts for the coming days, the main flow of the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River and Dongding Lake will continue to experience heavy rainfall, potentially affecting downstream areas even more. In light of the current flood situation, the Ministry of National Defense has dispatched Tate task forces to support frontline flood control efforts in the southern region. Additionally, key water management facilities like Tamheap on the Yangtze River have been activated to reduce discharge flow and alleviate pressure downstream. According to Liani Zaibao, since the beginning of the month, widespread heavy rains have poured down on the Tamwang region. According to Climate Center statistics in Hubei province, the average rainfall this month has broke in historical extreme records, reaching the highest level for the same period since meteorological records began in 1951. This is the highest value in history. According to expert analysis, this round of heavy rain is not only extensive but also intense, featuring extreme climate conditions primarily due to the continuous influence of cold and east cyclones from the north and subtropical high pressures. The position of the subtropical high pressure in the western Pacific is relatively stable, and the moisture transport channel is also relatively stable. Hubei is located on the edge of the subtropical high pressure, within a strong moisture transport belt, ensuring a continuous supply of moisture. The influx of cold air moving southwards colliding with warm air in the southern region leads to persistent thunderstorms and heavy rain in Hubei. 
Thank you all for your attention and viewership. Please leave your feedback in the comment section of this video so that we can timeline, respond, and address any question you may have. Assisting you, if you find it interesting, please like and click the bell icon below to not miss the last this video from our editorial team. Goodbye and see you again in the next new update from 22 Hours channel.